Now that we have learned the basic drawing and basic editing tools, let's take a look at setting up uh, some architectural elements in a floor plan. To do that, we need to understand how AutoCAD drawings are structured uh, or organized, and basically they're organized using layers. Now layers up here, I'll take a look uh, at the layer menu, and I'll just click the little jump out and undock button to undock my layer menu. This is the Mac menu. The PC menu has a few more columns. The Mac menu uh, doesn't have quite as many columns, although if you're missing some, you can right click on a blank area of the column and you can get some additional ones, including uh, whether or not a layer plots. Uh, plot is another word for printing. And you can see here that each of the columns, they change as you add it in there. There are only uh, some layers which don't plot. So Mac menu doesn't have the uh, column dividers, makes it a little harder to read. But anyway, let's talk about uh, uh, each of the characteristics of the layers. First of all, you will see that a layer has a name. The name should be indicative of the types of objects on the layer. And this allows you to turn layers on and off. So for example, let's say I want to draw some lighting in. I can double click on the lighting menu and it makes it the current layer. You can also right click on it and uh, make it the current layer. The lighting layer has a line weight, which is 70 millimeters. I can click on this and choose some other dimension, but 70 is a nice heavy line weight for those light fixtures. I can also change the line type. Right now there are only two in here. I can also click the manage tool and load in a whole bunch of different types of lines. And you may find as you go along that things like batting or plumbing fixtures that you'll need specialty line types for that. For, for us now, this is all that we actually need. And um, you'll also see a color associated with each of these line. Um, the color is basically there for reference so that you can tell which lines are which um, or which layers are which lines are on which layers. So that is the layer menu. And as a rule of thumb, uh, when you're drawing something new, if I wanted to, uh, let's say, draw some walls, I'm going to set my line, uh, my layer to be the walls layer. And again, this layer menu, I'm keeping it docked here on the right. You can also close all of these menus. Also, all of the layer commands, by the way, are also available as buttons up here. In addition to right clicking, you can uh, make a, a selected layer the current layer. You can change their order. You can also do what's called freezing or thawing, um, and you can just turn a layer off. So for example, I made my lighting layer here, and let's say I wanna have a chandelier over this table. I've drawn something on the wrong layer. I can select that object, and in the properties menu, I can choose which layer it's on. So here we go, I'll put this on the lighting layer. And you can see it has changed color. Now you might say, isn't that a heavy line weight? Why doesn't it look heavy? Down here in my drawing modes menu, I have a show or hide line weight button. Uh, I'm gonna show line weights. Now when I click on that, you see how heavy everything gets? That is a great way to preview how lines are going to look when you print. However, when you draw, that can be a little annoying. So a lot of people, have it off and that is the default value anyway all right i've got my lighting in there but i don't want to see it in floor plan all i have to do is come in here to my layer menu and you see how there's a button right at the end here this is the on layer on or layer off button okay the visibility button and the lighting disappears and this is how AutoCAD drawings generally are structured plans, that is, which is to say your floor plan, your reflected ceiling plan, your furniture plan, all of them are drawn in exactly the same location. You just control the layer visibility when you go to print. So to make a reflected ceiling plan, you turn off the furniture, the flooring, even the doors, and you turn on the lighting and anything associated with the ceiling. I think I'm gonna go into this uh, room up here that used to be the kitchen, and I'm gonna draw in a new counter over here, and maybe a new bathroom up here, new toilet room. So uh, the counter is probably going to want to go on the uh, furniture layer, so I'll, I'll stick that on the furniture layer from now. 
And now I'll show you a couple of tricks that you can do. First of all, you can start your new wall, uh, new counter by drawing a line. I'm going to type in L for line, and line is the first option that pops up. So I'm going to tap on, hit enter to start that. As you might imagine, you could just start on the end point. I want to start a little bit in though. So I'm going to get a temporary O snap that we learned last time. And you just hold down shift and right click, and you can get a temporary O snap. In this case, I'm going to get nearest. I'll just start right over here because you don't want that counter to go right up to the edge. Now, as I draw, move my mouse out, remember I have ortho on. That's this drawing mode. So I'm only going at a right angle. And now I could move my mouse until I get exactly to two feet, but that's kind of hard. So I'll just type in 24 and enter to draw it exactly 24 inches. And again, leaving my ortho mode on, I can bring the line down in this direction. I believe that that's about right, about four foot three. Now, another thing that you can do is you can make reference to points by using extension lines. Now you see how, as I move my mouse over this endpoint, AutoCAD sees the endpoint, but if I move my mouse up slowly, there's a green dashed line, a little hard to see, but that green dashed line is an extension line and AutoCAD says, oh, you want it to be aligned with that point. You just need to click to align it. And there you go. I'll hit escape to end that um, tool. So there's my countertop, okay? And you can change the location of these lines um, like we did before using grips. You know, I could drag this up and fix it, okay, like that. Now I could edit this uh, countertop, which seems to be a little bit off, by using my grips and moving it up by, by using grips. But there is another tool, another command called stretch. And I'll just type in the word stretch and hit enter. And the way stretch works, you need to draw a, a crossing window around the vertices that you want to edit. Or the grips is another way to do it, another way to think of it. So I'm going to click once to start my crossing window. And you see how I've gone entirely over this endpoint and this endpoint and the midpoint of this line and they all become selected. I'll click on the opposite side. Now you can only do one selection there, one crossing window. So I'm going to hit enter. And now you see how I can stretch that counter up very nicely uh, to make it look about right. Just be forewarned that if you activate the stretch command and don't have all the endpoints selected, you can get some pretty interesting stuff going on. Now, what about if I wanted to draw the walls for the bathroom? Well, I could do it the same way. The trick is remember to change your current layer to the walls layer. And now go and start your line tool. And again, I'm going to use my temporary O snap, go with the nearest, and then I'm going to draw that line right across using perpendicular. Now, how am I going to get a wall that's five, eight, five inches thick? Well, uh, I'm just going to use the offset tool. Type in offset. And as I mentioned last time, I'm going to just type in commands from here on in. I find that it's a better practice to learn how to draw your projects. Now, okay, I've got my nice wall. What about uh, the door? I want to have a door into the bathroom. That would be awfully nice. Well, one of the great things about AutoCAD is if you have something in your drawing, it's very easy to copy. So I'm going to just take a door that's already in my project. Maybe I'll take this one and I'll select the door. I'm going to select the frame too. I'm also going to select the other side of the frame and the door swing. See how I selected all of those? And now I can just right click on them and choose copy selection. And it needs a base point. So I'll grab by, um, let's see, I'll grab it by this end point right here. And then I'm going to put it right on the right side of my uh, bathroom. Maybe I'll just do it right there. There we go. Okay. I'll hit escape to end the copy command. So now I've got the door, but it's oriented the wrong way. I'm going to use a selection window. Remember, not a crossing window, but a selection window to just select the door, its uh, frame, and the swing and the trim. And now I'm going to rotate this whole kit and caboodle. Again, I could type in rotate. I could click on the rotate command, but I like using this quick menu because it's easy to find.
And now I can uh, click the intersection here as the base point. And as I move my mouse around, you see the door flip around. And we just click to get it in the orientation that you want. I think I'm going to move this guy over a little bit. Now I've typed M for move. And I want to just select this previous selection set. I'll type in P and enter. And there's my previous selection set. Okay, so there's a, some real nice keyboard shortcuts you can use. Sadly, they don't make for a very good video because um, you can't see me typing. But anyway, now I'm just going to click and dra uh, click once to give it a base point and move this over to the corner. Now, what if I want the door on the other side? Well, uh, that's pretty easy. Again, uh, I'm going to select what I want to change. In this case, I want the door and the whole kit and caboodle. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use another command called mirror. And that looks uh, like this one over here, mirror, or I'll just type in mirror. Oops, not mirror hatch, but mirror. Um, with mirror, um, the way it works is you have to draw a line that represents the uh, line around which the objects get mirrored. So in this case, I'm going to use the midpoint of the door frame. And you see how the curse, uh, the con command line is telling me, hey, you need another point. Always, if you're in the middle of a command and you're not sure what the computer is waiting for, check that command line. Anyway, I'll click the second point. It says, hey, do you want to erase the source objects? Those are the original objects. Well, I don't want a door that has two of them, uh, one up and one down. So I'm going to choose, yes, erase the originals. Now, the last thing is, I still have this line here There's a continuous line, which if I were to turn on my line weights, well, that doesn't look right. It looks like I have a wall going through here. Now we can use our trim command, which we learned before. Trim. I'll select these two lines using a selection window as my trimmers. Hit enter. And now I should be able to just trim away these outer lines. There we go. Now you can see how it's much easier to see what's going on with your with your wall now that it doesn't have a heavy line in the middle. Now as you're drawing along, uh, one thing that I like to do is go into full screen mode. Uh, let me just go to the view menu and there's an option for enter full screen. And this is really nice. Just gives you a little bit of mo uh, more square footage to uh, or square inches to work on on your screen. I could also hide some of these menus or at least make them a little minimized just to give me a little bit more uh, acreage. Further things that we want to draw are things like the toilet and the sink. Normally you would think, oh, I'll just draw it with lines and arcs and stuff like that. AutoCAD has special objects called blocks, which uh, are basically collections of lines and arcs and any other drawn elements um, that are in sort of ready-made packages. And to insert one into your project, you actually just type the word insert and hit enter. And uh, what you'll find is that there are probably a bunch already loaded into your drawing and if you're lucky, they're labeled something that makes sense. If they're labeled uh, AC dollar, A dollar sign, whatever, then, that, then you don't know what that is. But there should be one called toilet. Oh, yep, there we go, toilet. You'll see a little preview of it. You can also explode it. And there are other options, including um, if you want to scale the object and if you want to specify um, a specific angle. So, for example, I could type in 90 and it would come in at an angle. Anyway, uh, when you click, uh, don't, don't explode the block, please, but uh, do insert it, choose insert. And what will happen is, there you go, there's your toilet um, already at the right angle. I'm gonna put it against uh, this wall here. Now you'll notice, hey, that toilet is awfully dark. It should be on a layer, which makes sense for toilets. Uh, I'm gonna go with plumbing. Um, and in fact, I think I'm gonna put a sink in now. Let me put myself on the current layer Choose insert and see if we have a sink in here. I believe we have, oh, we have a turkey. You never know when you need one of those, but let's go with a sink and insert. And there you go. You can place it against the wall. And most uh, components have an insertion point, which kind of makes sense for that component. That actually is a little bit 
kind of in the way of the door now, isn't it? Now, this is clearly not a handicap accessible toilet, but it'll have to do for now. All right, so there's our uh, toilet. Actually, we could probably use a corner mounted sink that is a little smaller. Let me go down to this porch area. And I think what I want to have is a little counter around the porch and I'm going to have some bench seating around the counter. So first of all, to draw the counter, let's say I want a real s small counter because it's not very, uh, not a whole lot of space. Maybe I'll just ha uh, offset the edge of the wall about eight inches. Offset, okay, about eight inches. And I'll just borrow one of these lines here because it's easier than trying to figure out where those lines should go going to make those lines the correct layer in this case furniture will have to do now if I want to get these lines to extend here to the outer wall I can just use the grips and get the extension to meet like that but what if I want these two to join to each other well there is a tool called chamfer and I'll just type in the word chamfer. And you can see from the little icon that chamfer bevels uh, two objects together. But this is commonly used to join the objects. If you look down at the options menu, there's a, a way to specify the distance. I'm going to just type in D for distance. And the, set the chamfer distances to zero and leave the second one at zero. Now what will happen when I select the two lines they come together at a nice right angle. If I wanted uh, to have a little kind of bevel in the corner, I could type in D for distance. It likes to be symmetrical, so I'll go with six and six. And now when I select the two lines, you get a nice bevel in the corner. I think I like that better, I'll go with that. Now, if I want uh, to draw a stool, I'll draw that as a circle, and again, what you're going to want to do before you draw something is make sure you're on the right layer. I always forget to do that, but you know, such is life. All right, and I'll draw the stool as a circle. And stools should probably be about uh, 15 inches in diameter. So we'll go with a seven inch radius. That's how you specify them. And I like to, just as a design, uh, whatever aesthetic thing, I like to show the stool as under the counter. So I'm going to trim off the base here. Oops. There we go. So that looks kind of like the stool is pushed under the counter. Now, before you start making copies of this lovely uh, bench seat that I've made, it's probably a good idea to turn it into its own block. And the really, the reason to do that is um, if you want to make any changes to it later, it's a lot easier because you have, you'll have multiple copies. And what you do is you just type in the word block. And this is going to be bring up the define block menu. And you can call it, let's, we'll just call it uh, stool seat. Whoops, stool seat. You can select the objects if you didn't already. If you had objects selected, those will be the ones in there. And, and it will tell you one object. You want it to convert those objects to a block. You can also give it a base point. Now I'm going to pick a spot right where the arc in, uh, intersects with the uh, countertop. Anyway, and there's a number of other options here. But once you choose create block, so now I'm going to copy the stool over here. There we go. Now I'm going to leave ortho on for this one. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, mirror these two. Again, I'm just trying to demonstrate how these things would be done. And I'll use the midpoint, drawn uh, second point straight up. And there we go. I'm going to keep the source. Oops, I meant, didn't mean to delete those source objects. Let me do that again. There we go. No, I don't want to delete the source object, so I have them all. Now, what about over here? I want some, well, uh, now I can try mirroring this object, and I'll use the endpoint of this corner window frame, and that should give me an exactly 45 degree angle, and that will, of course, make a perfect copy, and no, I don't want to erase the source objects. So now we've got a whole bunch of copies. Now, I want to make a whole bunch of copies running across here, um, but I want them to be evenly spaced. 
I mean, in reality, of course, chairs get moved around all the time. But in this case, if I want them evenly spaced and I want multiple copies, a tool that's really handy is called Array. All right, not a ray, but an array. Let enter. And it's going to be a rectangular array. And what's cool about the rectangular array is that there are these grips that allow you to kind of graphically edit the array. If I, whoops, if I click on the grip and drag it out, you see how I can increase the number of components. I can also drag this so that I have fewer columns. And I can even change the spacing whoops, by just clicking and dragging until I get it just the way I want. There we go. That's a nice array, although actually I think that's probably too many here. Let's, let's, let's let it not be quite so spaced out. And there we go. The array tool is awfully handy. You can also, when you do the array tool, I'll just hit escape to exit. Um, enter also works. Um, you can do arrays along irregular paths. Um, obviously, you have to have those paths drawn. Lovely layout. You can start to make changes to the block. Uh, the first thing you, to do, uh, if you want to edit a block, you just double click on it. And it brings up what's called the block editor. Okay, and you, you can see here it says block editor. There's also an icon for it, um, or you can... Um, Anyway, uh, objects inside a block, in order to behave correctly, elements need to be on layer zero. It's just one of those things. So I'm going to go back here and choose layer zero. What you'll see is that um, it will turn black, but what it will force the object to do is when the block is inserted, any object inside it that's on layer zero will take the properties of the layer that the block is placed on. Now, um, I could just uh, do anything I want to this block. Let's try um, offset. We'll put a little uh, back on this thing. Oh, I don't know, maybe two inches. Draw a little back. And um, let's just shorten this guy up. So it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, a backrest or something like that. There we go. I like this nearest, whoops, went the wrong way. There we go. Oh yeah, very nice. Here, we'll even give it a little, little style there. Oh yeah, lovely. Okay, <laughs> anyway, when you uh, click save and the X button up here at the top, that exits the block editor. And what you'll see is they all now change. And that is a super handy way to now, what if you have a whole bunch of complex elements, and but you're only going to have one of them? Well, in that case, you still draw them on layer zero, but you can do what's called grouping them. You can select the objects in whatever means you want, and uh, right-click on them, and choose group. Now, the big difference here, groups are great when you have individual sort of instances of an object. Maybe I'm going to have two or three carpets in this project, but maybe each one will be slightly different. In that case, groups are ideal. It's so much easier. I don't have to select a million objects. I just have this one. I can edit them by uh, just using a single grip. It's much cleaner. However, like other objects, you'll want to make sure that it's on the right layer. I think I'll go with flooring in this case. And again, it will take the properties of that layer. Now, uh, you can see here that my flooring layer, that's a little darker than I like. I'm going to have to call up my layers menu. And let's take a look at flooring here. Oh, there it is. 60 mm, 60 millimeters is a little bit too much, a little too dark. Interestingly enough, AutoCAD, the lightest line weight is zero. And you'd think zero, that's really... Not, that's that's nothing, right? Isn't it? Well, and it is nothing uh, except that um, in AutoCAD land, it's it's the lightest line weight. All right, let's put this back over here. Well, there we go. We have so far done blocks and groups. And the fun thing about AutoCAD is if you want additional blocks, like let's say I want some for the furniture. Well, I can try insert, oops, insert, and see if there are any tables um, in my project, let's see, we've got a table for eight. That's a bit much. You know, I don't see any in here. 
So maybe what I need, oh, here, here's one actually. I'll use this one. I'll put this one in here. And uh, you can insert ones that are in here. If you don't have uh, any in your project, you can open up another project. I have uh, placed on Canvas an, uh, what I called a uh, tracing file where there's a lot of components, uh, a lot of blocks already in there. I just opened up the tracing file. You can see there's a whole bunch of interesting things in here. There's toilets, there's tables and chairs. And for our little project, uh, look, this, these are all blocks and they're really easy to copy into your drawing. Just use Control C or Command C on a Mac and then go to your drawing and paste it in, Command V. Okay, there you go. What you'll see, by the way, is that these objects are, are two-dimensional objects. They're just lines. So they don't trim out the lines behind them. You'll have to do that manually. Now, if this isn't enough, if there aren't enough options, you can always, when you go to the Insert menu, you can browse on your computer and see if you can find any downloaded blocks. I uh, don't have any individual ones that I've sent to you, but sometimes you'll find that Steelcase or other companies have a published library of AutoCAD blocks. If, <coughs> if you are searching online, um, you can get the 2D blocks and those are fine. So one of the nice things about using a group for the flooring is that you can use other objects to trim it away, trim away these extra lines. I'm going to choose trim. Um, whereas with blocks, you can't do that. Uh, I'm going to select these blocks, whoops, as my trimmers here. I'll just click on all of the pieces of this block so that you can see what it looks like. Hit enter to choose them as my trimmers. And now I can just select the interior objects to trim away. And you can see how now it looks like my lines are being blocked by the chairs. Objects in AutoCAD generally are 2D, so that's why we want to trim away those elements. Last thing that we can do here is for drawing is we can add in a hatch pattern for the flooring. And this is really a fun thing to do. Um, and the command is hatch. Okay, I'll click hat, type in hatch and enter. And AutoCAD basically gives you a number of kind of ready-made hatches. So here's my uh, hatch menu up here. I'll just click on the down arrow. Right now it's hatching a solid color, but let's choose hatches. And there are, uh, these are basically line patterns that are ready made. Uh, let's go with, uh, I don't know, a, a, a tight uh, bond here of uh, brick. So you choose the pattern. Okay, we'll close the hatch library. There are what's called a hatch pattern scale. And it depends kind of on the pattern and um, the uh, drawing, but usually one is a little tight. So let's try 24 as the hatch pattern. Finally, up here, you'll see there's an option for pick points. And that's basically how you want to hatch. I want to fill this area that's not covered by the carpet and not covered by the furniture. So I'll click to pick an internal point. The entire area that you want to have the hatch pattern um, should be visible, by the way. Otherwise, AutoCAD has trouble. Uh, oh, it looks like my hatch pattern is, is actually not right. Let me go and change the scale here back to one and see what we get. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. Okay, this hatch pattern wants to be one. And you can see how it's filled in around all of the furniture. And that's it. Just hit escape and you're done. Very easy and uh, straightforward. Now, what if I wanted to put a, uh, say, a tile pattern in the kitchen? To do flooring, it's a little more tricky. I'm going to go back to my hatch tool. I'm going to pick an internal point. And uh, you can see how it did not get this area here around the door. So I'm going to have to click in that area to add it. All right. And uh, hit escape to finish. But if I want uh, a tile pattern, I have to come back, double click on this hatch, and it brings up the hatch edit menu. And this is where you can do a whole bunch of other things. You can change its layer. You can fiddle, out, fiddle with its transparency. But the biggest thing is here, what we want to do is use a user defined pattern. And we'll leave it at zero degrees. And uh, let me drag this off to the side so you can see. We'll make it a double pattern and we'll make the spacing 12 inches. And let's preview what that looks like. And that is a, a square tile pattern. If you like the way it is, um, 
hit escape to return to the dialog box, right click to accept the hatch. I'm going to hit escape and go back to the dialog box because there's another thing you can do, which is you can specify the exact origin that you want the pattern to begin with. So I'm going to click to set a new origin and I'm going to put the origin right here in the corner. Now when we preview this, it the, the hatch pattern should start in that corner. Let's see. Sometimes when you use that, it, it doesn't display right away. Um, you have to click OK, and then it will move the hatch pattern. Uh, ideally, you want tiles centered on the door, starting at the corner. So our goal here is to get in some flooring in the different rooms using hatch patterns to get in all of our uh, components and to get our custom carpet uh, into our plans.